I have a good question for you today. Can you remember which was the last time where you were just wondering how many days do I have left to live? I'm asking these questions because I had this story that I would like to share with you. Try to imagine I'm sitting in an airplane flying from Olbia, Italy, to Berlin. And I was just reading my book on my iPad when I see suddenly flames coming from the engine of the airplane. And so in a panic mode, I just jump up from my chair and I go to the other side of the airplane just to realize that also the other engine was not working. In that moment, I understood that the airplane was crashing. And the funny thing was, I was on board. So I take my iPhone, try to write what is going to be the last message to my wife, who is sitting in Berlin waiting for me, knowing that I'm going to die. And it was a text which was like, my sweetheart, no matter what today will happen, remember, you are the second person in my life who gave me life after my mother. And I was sure that she wouldn't have not got this message because I was an airplane. So for some reasons and for some miracles, the captain of the airplane managed to bring the, airport, uh, the airplane back to, to, this, uh, to the airport in Olbia. And I'm sitting in the emergency room with other passengers and survivors. And uh, I'm just thinking, every second of my life can be the last one. And so I'm thinking, if this would have been my last day on earth, which would have been my legacy to the world after having spent some years on this planet? What could I have given to the world so that I had the feeling that my life was worth it? And the topic of today is what I give as an answer to that question in that hospital. And the answer that is now in this compact form is you as a human being, you have unlimited potential and you can transform all your, uh, all your dreams into reality. And with an additional comment, life is short and don't waste time, your valuable time for things that are not so important. And another consideration is that you always get cards in this game of life, and sometimes you get good cards, you, sometimes you get bad cards. So when you, you get bad cards, it's really up to you to make the best use out of them, in order really to cope with the situation and try to achieve what is really matters to you. On the other side, and this is the, bad, this is the good news, you have got a brain which has the capacity to create every single future that you have created in your mind and transform this idea into reality. With the power of thoughts, with the power of words, and with the corresponding actions that will follow. And I'm not saying this to you just because uh, I feel like one of these motivational gurus or because I've just got this wisdom reading one of these motivational books that you can find everywhere. I'm telling this to you because as a physician by training, I've spent more than 30 years in making research on this capability of the brain. And I have observed thousands of people. I have read biography of people who had an excellent, extraordinary life. I spoke with managers that had an incredible career in, in the different companies and that had a um, 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 rapid career development that got the salary increase within a short period of time. And studying the correlation between these positive outcomes, for example, salary increase, and the data 
coming from the neuroscience, the so-called neuroscience of self-realization. And this is my journey. This is my story, and my story started when I decided to study medicine, and I was living in Viareggio, which is a, a really fantastic place in Tuscany, near Lucca. And at that time, I was so passionate about knowing everything about brain, where does emotion come from, why are we feeling like that, and so on. So, and I decided to study medicine with a focus on neuroscience. And at the end of my medical school, I felt really strong desire to enlarge my horizon and, and become really one of the best neuroscience in the world because of patients. And so I took, at that time, a very bold decision, something that people really consider as a crazy idea because I decided to move to West Berlin. And some years ago, West Berlin was, for many people uh, living in my city, was a really was a nice city, but they could understand why. And the reason why I decided to, to be in West Berlin is because at that time, I thought that I could have found the biggest number of neuroscience centers, really excellent centers, and also profit from this energy that West Berlin at that time was giving to the people and is still giving today to many, many people who are living there. And now I, really, I would say that for me, Berlin is one of the best city in the world. Would you agree with me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got it. So, um, but the first days in this West Berlin were not that easy. So, in what I call the day one, the day zero of my journey, I had no money, I had no flat, and I had no job, and I couldn't speak no words of German. And I started to observe what was happening to to my colleagues, to my friends that had arrived at the same time, and many of them were just giving up. They were not able to integrate in the city, they had financial problems, there was a clash in, in between the two cultures and so on. So for some reasons, they were not able to move forward. On the other side, I've been able to get my first job after one week, in the hospital, and with the first um, job, I got money, and at the time, uh, Deutsche Mark, and with this money, I was able to afford a small flat, one room flat in Kreuzberg, and um, I was able to uh, upgrade my level of uh, German up to the level of C1 uh, within three months. It was a great story. So, and I tried to understand at that time which was behind that. And now I will share with you which was the formula of my success. And the formula of success that I implemented in Berlin was exactly what I have done during my medical schools, where um, I've been able to, um, to finish my curriculum within the time, and I got 110 uh, scores, which is the summa cum laude, so it's the highest score that you can get in the university in Italy. So I was really a high achiever. To tell you the truth, without being so, without getting, um, uh, let's say, a burnout, it was uh, an easy game, but it was very successful. So I started to, to, to think about this, um, this, this situation. So what, what I was doing, what other people were doing, and I try to understand the difference. And this is now the algorithm, this is the formula of success, this is the universal tool, I can tell you, based on neuroscience, clinical evidence, that can allow you to become everything that you want. If you want to start to more to be uh, a rock star, if you want to become a bestseller author, if you want to become a famous piano player, if you want to become uh, the best actor in uh, Hollywood, this is the formula. Okay, this is my theory, but it, a theory, but it has been validated through studies and also um, observing the um, biography of many people. And so, these are the basic rules. So first of all, there is an internal mind loop, which is very, very important. And everything starts answering 
the question that you have to answer for you, why? So for example, when I was at university, every time that I uh, wanted to, to have um, a good score in the exam, I was just thinking, why are you studying so much? And my why was, I want to become a neurologist. And then I started to create a life vision I will be in West Berlin and I will work in a hospital there and uh, I will be a, um, an excellent uh, neurologist. Then I created, I derived a dream from, um, from that life vision. So the dream was um, I will work in the best hospitals, I will earn a lot of money <laughs> because money is also important, so I will buy a house in Sardinia and then the think phase is also very important. So moving from this loop, I started to think which are the next step in order to get that goal. And the goal was the highest score in the examination. And it was really working. And the interesting part and the story was that in order to have a high performance um, based on this mental loop that I was able to activate, I had to feel every time and transport myself with, with my imagination in the situation in the future. So for example, uh, I was trying to imagine myself having a good score and then uh, getting the, uh, this internal reward and, and then uh, making um, a party together with my friends and these were f good feelings that helped me in creating this imaginary. The interesting, another interesting part was that when I moved then after the schools into the corporate world, I was applying the same loops. There was an internal loop through answering the why, creating life vision, dreaming, for example, I want to become medical manager, I want to become um, public relations manager, and so on. And then having this moment of thinking, of um, feeling the situation, the future situation, in the way that it felt like real, I was able to achieve this new role. So it was clear for me that there was something magic in this feeling, anticipating the situation, and feeling every day as it would have already happened. This is not trivial, because we always tend to think that Memories are just related to something that belonged to the past. And memory can be also related to something which will happen. And the important thing is that these memories have, are embedded with good emotions. Again, this is the, let's say, the social, the social um, proof that what I'm telling to you is not just a theoretical construct, but it's exactly what other successful people have done. Um, and this um, um, explanation, these are persons that really work hard, but hard in the way that they have utilized the energy, the days, uh, every one of us has 24 hours a day, but these people have been able to make the best out of their own energy, and they were using this loop. So I, I read the biography, and they were just telling just the same. And now the, the rest of the... Um, let's say, the uh, neuroanatomical and neuropharmacological explanation. The first part, so once you start to have a dream, there is an activation of the prefrontal cortex, which is here, the frontal part of the brain, which is like our genius GPR, or it's like our CEO. Right? It's the CEO of our company with the name Brain. And then you activate the think neural network, which is uh, allocated in the reticular activating system, which is like a, a DJ, this RIS, put all the information together and bind all the things that are relevant to the idea that you have created and help us in execute that. So then you move into the third phase, in the third phase and then you have the activation of the limbic system, which is like the archive of long-term memories, and it's like uh, it's, it's your mental Netflix. You have all the films, the good films, the bad films that you can, you had, um, that you have experienced in your life, but you have also the new films that you are going, going to, to create. So it's your uh, data bank in measuring. And then you have um, the cortical, motor, cort motor cortex that help you in the 
um, execution. It brings you in movement and brings you in, yeah, in, in movement. So this is, uh, this is, uh, this, um, these are the structure of the brain that helps you in, um, um, in executing this, this formula. And this is not just by chance, because um, this is exactly what we needed, or what we have optimized during uh, the years of evolution, in order to move through the situation where we were dreaming to fight and kill the mammut, and then execute, uh, hunting the mammut, and then celebrating uh, the hunting together with other people and, and eating that. And uh, now, maybe you, you, could, you could ask, OK, but if we have all these structures, why are we not all successful? And the, the reason for that is just because the brain is um, working according to a very basic principle, which says efficiency first. That means for the brain is everything which is an old habit is good. So for example, when we are driving on the motorway and we don't consume too much energy because it's, it's, it's an old habit. Once you start to think about a new things, a new habit, the brain will start to hate that because there will be a higher consume of energy. That's why it's difficult, it's challenging to develop new habits and we tend to stick to the old habits. But nature, evolution, have given us a key gift, and the gift, the gift uh, that helps us in order to overcome this is what I consider is the solution of this formula. The feeling, and please follow me, the feeling the future situa situation as it will be already real and embedding this future situation with positive thoughts and emotions. So now it's becoming a little bit complicated. Why is it like that? Um, I've created this, this, this magical circle, and basically, I want to make an example. For example, if you want to become a speaker, you should start to speak, uh, to, to think about speakers every day. And then you have positive emotions, and then you start to secrete dopamine, and dopamine makes you addicted to this new situation. And you repeat, and you repeat this again, till you will have a new behavior. And then at the end, I tell you, after a few days, you will be a public speaker because of this reinforcement given by, by dopamine. So at the end, what I want to share with you is you can create all your future that you want by dreaming, thinking, feeling, and acting. And uh, remember, life is short, and future is just an option. So create your future now. Thanks a lot.